All right. Well, welcome, everybody, back to the Anarchus Project. And tonight, um, we were working on our MIDI controller device, and we are still working on that. We finished most of the design work, so all those parts are on order. And I've actually gotten some of them, but I don't have all of them. So we're going to be starting a new project tonight, uh, which I'm actually really excited for. It sounds like it's going to be a really cool project. It's going to be something that a lot of people have already done. So we're going to have to work really hard to kind of make it our own. But I think that'll be part of the fun and challenge in that. In the past, I've kind of veered away from things that a lot of other people have done because if somebody if it's been done to death, it's hard to compete and uh, make something that's actually like stands out and has something unique about it. But in this particular instance, I think I think the challenge is going to be fun and that we should dive in and kind of push into that model of going for something that has a lot of competition and uh, a lot of ideas out there to see what we can do to make it our own. So to start off with, though, I will show you the parts I did get for the MIDI controller. I dig them out. There we go. So I got the cases. So here's one of them. If you can see, we got that smooth recessed type. I'm just noticing now on the light that it's not as smooth as I would like, but yeah, it's pretty good. And then it has the mounting points inside for the circuit board. So that'll be cool. Also, we received a lot of our mounting hardware. So we have a ton of screws and washers and standoffs and things here. Yeah, here's the standoffs. So... That's cool, and uh, we'll be making use of that. So we're still waiting on our circuit boards. They're getting close to being done. Last I checked, they were in the electrical test phase, uh, which means that they're pretty much built. Uh, they've gotten all their layers put on, and the acid etched away everything that it was supposed to. So they'll go through an electrical test and then a final visual inspection by whoever the worker is on the line there. And then they will get sent to us, and that'll take another four to seven days. So we might have to do a couple of streams for the lightsaber. Uh, I've just spoiled what I'm going to do here. We're going to make a custom lightsaber. Uh, we'll have to do a couple streams for that, and then uh, we should be able to jump back to the MIDI controller and actually build it rather than design. It won't just be sitting here on my computer, but me actually like building it in real life, which will be cool. So that'll be fun. But for tonight, we are going to start trying to design a custom lightsaber. Uh, just basically a model that you can use as part of a costume or something as a showpiece. Uh, so a couple of rules that I've kind of put forth already. I don't care much for making one that is like, quote-unquote, dueling capable. If it happens to be capable of that, that's fine. Uh, but I'm not going to design with that intent in mind because that brings a whole host of new challenges to it. And then... There was one other. Oh, it's not going to be like a retractable blade or anything because other than doing some really cheap thing, that's actually kind of hard to do and make it look nice. So we're going to ignore those two things. It's going to be just a, a permanently attached, fully extended blade and uh, more as a showpiece than as like uh, a one designed to hit things with. So yeah, that's the plan. So I'll turn the music back on. I hope uh, you all are ready to give ideas because tonight is going to be brainstorming and putting together requirements. So I will pull that screen up here. I've also adjusted our bounties. Um, you can see that there's a bunch of Dogecoin bounties, but a couple of those are unknown tasks at the moment. And that's because I haven't decided yet. We haven't hit any roadblocks, so I don't know like what uh, things I'm going to need help or uh, need to tip people for helping me out in. So I will leave those up uh, and then as spots that I can fill in. Those unknown ones, I'll, uh, I'll put something in there as we encounter roadblocks or obstacles. So what we're going to do is go through and decide all of the features that we want to include on this thing. I have a few ideas. I'm sure other people will have some ideas. And what the overall idea or intent behind the design is. And then from there we can start listing like uh, specific requirements that we need to adhere to. Uh, we're going to go with one. We're going to try and go with a custom hilt. Uh, a tick that just asked that. And 
that's I think is going to present the greatest challenge, but also be the most like rewarding part when we finish it. It is really hard in my mind. Like I'm trying to figure out exactly how we do that. Cheapest way is probably to get something 3D printed. Uh, I would like to get it milled out of like some sort of metal. That would be really cool, but also really expensive. So, you know, barring a sudden influx of donations, I don't know that that's going to happen. <laughs> but we'll see what we can do. That's part of the reason why I don't want to make it like a dueling capable lightsaber as well, because in order to do that, I'd have to get a pretty strong hilt, and that's going to be hard to do. All right. Um, let's see here. Let's just go with custom lightsaber. So, that being said, uh, we're making custom lightsaber. If you have ideas or anything, it's going to be basically a showpiece of some kind. That you, but I do want you to be able to carry it and swing it around a little bit, just not, you know, like actually try and duel with it. And. Uh, it's not going to be a retractable blade, but other than those two things, nothing is off the table yet. Unless it's just, you know, so feel free to shout things out. I think I've decided already that I want to use the NeoPixels again. Uh, since we already wrote some software libraries for that, we can make, and we have some experience with them, we can make use of them. So I would like to use the NeoPixels to light up the blade which means we got to get a blade, get some NeoPixels up in there, and figure out how to keep the like a string of them up in there and make the lighting look even and run all that. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, what should we do? So let's see, custom lightsaber, should I call that like objective? Probably. It's a showpiece. Is that how you spell it? Yes. All right, and then Design ideas. All right, so I figure we just drop in a bunch of ideas really quick and see what happens. So you want sound effects. Okay, so uh, before we... Selectable blade colors and lighting features. I like where you all are going with both of those. We have to... So we have to consider all the work that is involved with that. The problem that we're going to face, the number one problem, is that it is a lightsaber with a hilt of a certain size. Uh, that everything has to go in. And most off-the-shelf stuff like, um, you know, circuit boards with speakers that are ready to plug into your Arduino and things like that are not, like, uh, are, well, they're not going to be small enough. They're not going to fit. It's going to be really hard to find one with a form factor that'll fit. I'm feeling a custom circuit board design on this, and I'm glad you brought up the sound effects because I kind of, I've never messed with a speaker on a circuit board before. You can get speakers as small as like a dime that'll uh, just that'll you can solder to a circuit board. And I've never used one before. I've never attempted to build something with one. I've used buzzers, uh, so it's kind of like a speaker, but it just you know buzzes. And I've done that with buzzers that can change pitch, but never a full blown speaker. So I, th I like that idea. I think we should definitely do that. I think we should do sound effects. And I think we should do... So let's see. Uh, let's do numbering, actually. Oh, sounds effects. Uh, and then we'll say custom speaker. Uh, PCB maybe I don't know just a bunch of buzzwords to get kind of the idea where we're going the second thing mentioned uh, selectable blade colors and lighting features I definitely like that so we're going to do let's say color changing programmable 
blade. Like, you should be able to do all kinds of different uh, things. Okay. So what's next? What else do we need? Uh, let's specify this is going to use NeoPixels. Uh, SF, sound effects based on motion of the hills. Right. So do we want to add an accelerometer? Because <laughs> that is absolutely another thing we can look at. So how about motion sensing accelerometer and effects sounds. I like that. Um, or changing program blade with NeoPixels. I also really kind of want this to be like super bright. That is just, for whatever reason, that is something I want. Uh, so I'm thinking a lot of NeoPixels, which means a lot of current, uh, a lot of power required. So we're going to have to figure that part out. Uh, so we said motion sensing. What else? Um, so we got selectable blade color, sound effects, motion sensing. How about this? This is an idea I had. I want to be able to change profiles or select like different blade colors and things and tune it on the fly. And that's going to be kind of hard to do without a bunch of feedback. So I wanted some buttons, but I need a way to give data back to the user saying, hey, uh, this is what you're changing or this is what you're adjusting right now. So I'm thinking, because you can actually buy these, you can buy little mini LCD screens that can attach to circuit boards and you can control through, you know, basic... Uh, uh, serial interfaces. So I'm thinking in the side of the hilt, if we're doing a custom hilt, we should put a little LCD screen. And that way we can have buttons on it that go through like menus and you can select color and then change how much red or how much green is in the, the blade color or select presets or different sound profiles. You know, it just gives us like a full flexibility of what we want to do. So barring anyone telling me that that's a terrible idea, I'm going to suggest LCD screen and menus for customization. Yeah, or uh, selectable profiles. Okay, what else do we need? Uh, you know what? I think you all will still be able to read it, so I'm going to change the font size here a little bit. Just so we can fit more on this one screen. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? We said motion sensor. We s How about, um? so we need to push a lot of current. One of the ways that we could do that is lithium ion batteries. You can actually buy, like, battery packs oh we gotta if the screen is a bit too much of a lightsaber what about plugging it into a computer and making custom profiles yes and i was absolutely thinking of doing that still but i think the screen anyway like you can load so like with a computer you could load like different profiles onto it and get a single profile i'm thinking with a screen i could load multiple profiles but i like where your head's at we should be able to plug it into a computer and upload programs or profiles so how about a USB-C port? Or a USB-C port and upload uh, profiles. Change settings, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay, and then jumping off that, because I was just talking about the lithium-ion batteries, you can buy off-the-shelf types of batteries, that, the kinds that like go into cell phones and things like that. So what if we make this a rechargeable lightsaber? Like you plug it into a USB-C and a, you know, a, a AC-DC adapter on the wall, and you can just recharge it that way. I think that would be cool.
So what we'll do next once we get these uh, all these ideas down is we'll start looking for parts and trying to find out like what's actually possible to get off the shelf and what things we have to custom make and what is just not feasible because it's too expensive or whatnot. Oh man, I'm already getting really excited about this. Um... The my own battery pack. Oh, um, say high current because we want to be able to drive all those NeoPixels. I wish they could make low powered NeoPixels. That would save me so much headache. If somebody can tell me of some lower powered NeoPixels, that would be awesome. The other problem we'll face with battery packs is they tend to be 3.7 volts and NeoPixels run at 5 volts. So we're going to have to step up the voltage, which you can do, but it means you have to go lower on the current, the amount of power being pushed through it. So. Um, all right, so we said rechargeable. Uh, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, now let's get into the, like the really, so as we're going down, it seems almost as we're going down this list, like this is the things we really need. And then as we go down, this gets more and more like wish list type. Like I really wish we could do this, but I don't know if we can. I want the, I was thinking about this. It would be really cool if the hilt had like it needs something to kind of give it a unique like style and i was thinking have like um like circuits drawn on the hilt that light up when you turn it on so like circuits drawn like they would be on a circuit board you know just a bunch of those angled straight lines and then have them in some way have a a couple of neopixels and some light pipes or something in some way that we could like light those up and uh, change the color of them and everything just to make the handle kind of light up and have its own, you know, style and everything to it. I'm going to say light up hilt or light features on hilt. Pipes, circuits. All right, one last ridiculous requirement. Do we... This is another one that I thought would be really hard, but also really cool. Um, and I don't know if it really fits into the, uh, into the Star Wars universe, like the Star Wars universe per se, but it would be satisfying is if we could put like a little uh, uh, servo in there or something and a weight so that when you turn it on, it like jolts, you know, just a weight that'll move down really quick and give it a kind of jolt when you turn it on. I think that would be awesome. <laughs> I don't know entirely like how easy or hard that would be, but... I'm gonna I'm gonna add that to this list. Ooh, vibration. That's not a bad idea. I like that a lot better almost than my idea. Okay. Actually, I do like that a lot better than my idea because I bet you we could buy an uh, off-the-shelf like little vibrating motor that we could somehow fit in there. You know when we finish this, the hilt's going to be like, you know, like broadsword sized. <laughs> so. Uh, slide vibration when it is on would be really cool. Yeah, I agree. And if you swing it around like you could add that to a profile almost. Okay. So let's say either moving weight or vibration, vibration. Yeah, vibration. I think both of those options are good, but I, I like that vibration option because that doesn't use too much power and it's less moving parts. On my end, at least. So I think that makes a lot of sense. All right, anything else? 
It needs pyrotechnics, I I think, but I don't think we can do that. It would be really cool if it like <laughs> had sparks or something come out of it when you turn it on or something. Man, this thing's going to use so much power. I think our biggest challenge is going to be the lithium-ion batteries. Take the pieces from an old console controller. You're right, I could, but you can... I'm 99% sure you could just buy this off the shelf uh, pretty easily. Let's go to our old friend DigiKey real quick and just see. Uh, oh, yeah. Here you go. It may not look exactly like what you're thinking of, but this is a little vibration motor. Already, everything's self-contained inside. You just got to power it, and it's six bucks. So, I think that's the easy solution right there. And the beauty of picking this over something that you get out of controller out of a controller is if you buy it here, it's easy to get later, and it's already a defined part. It's got a data sheet, which you can uh, look at and get all the measurements and everything for. So it tells you how much current you'll need and everything. You don't have to do any guesswork. It just tells you everything required. Operating voltage, 2.7 to 3.3 volts. Oh, man, we're going to have so much fun trying to work out the circuit here. This could get really expensive, and I'm... <laughs> Kind of like simultaneously excited and scared because it could be really nice if we do this right. Okay. Um, anything else? So, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, Tikta uh, gave me this project idea. So, he claimed the bounty for giving me a new project. Uh, and that's why he's here giving a lot of suggestions is because this is his project as well. So if there's, I think this is a great starting place. Um, if there's anything else we should do, though, any requirements or ideas for the lightsaber that we should do, please let me know. Sound effects, color changing, programmable blade. We're going to aim for super bright if we can. Motion sensing. LCD screen for side. I guess we do need buttons with this as well. We'll have to figure that out because it's going to be hard to find buttons small enough to fit on this. So it's a user input. Um, USB-C port. Let's see. For uploading and doing things. Rechargeable. Light features on the hills and jolt when powering on or off. Slash using. All right, I think that's pretty good. So I guess from this, we need to go through and figure out what things we need. Um, I went ahead to get put a spreadsheet together for, well, I created a spreadsheet. I haven't done anything else more to it for the uh, for a place to store parts. So we can do that here. Uh, let's see, change this location. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Location, description, part number, link. Oh, we need a item number as well. All right, so item and location we won't fill out yet, but we do need descriptions, part numbers, and links. Okay. So first things first, what did we decide? We wanted sound effects. All right, so we need a speaker 
So I'm going to go ahead and start off right off the bat here. I plan on using the TNC 4.1 for this. Sorry. All right. So we can ignore the speaker for the mo or the vibration for the moment. But speakers. One of the things we have to consider too is that I don't have a great soldering setup, so we need to consider something that's easy to solder or something like this that uses a connector. And is pretty cheap and has a bunch in stock. That would be ideal. 800 kilohertz, 800 hertz to 20 kilohertz. 20, uh, that's a pretty big range. All right, that's pretty much everything you'll ever hear. A uh, human ear can hear from 4 hertz to 20,000 hertz typically, so anything within that that big of a range and really anything under 4,000 can be pretty reasonable anyway, but well, you can get some dirt cheap stuff if you're willing to solder to it. Huh. All right, cool. So let me double check. So I'm going to use the TNC 4.1 to program all this and interface everything. So we just need to double check that uh, there's nothing available for that. I think I remember seeing somewhere that there was an off-the-shelf speaker module for the Teensy. Maybe, though. This is interesting. Speakers. Stereo enclosed speaker set. This is awfully specific. We need to double check too that the Teensy has like an easy to use speaker output. Oh, there is an audio shield. There's an audio adapter board for Teensy 4. Okay, here it is. It doesn't have a speaker, but it has the uh, SD card. And then it has a, a auxiliary jack, so you can plug a speaker into it. We could find a small one that takes an auxiliary. I don't know if I like that option or not. Teensy Audio Library. Interesting. I don't know what all goes into this. How do you have visual from one SIM card? Yes, but I don't know if any SIM cards you find... Or, uh, yeah, you're talking about memory card, you mean? Or... What do you mean by SIM card? Oh, memory card. Yes, absolutely. Though visual stuff, I mean, like, we're talking about getting an L LCD screen, but it's not going to be a super complex one. It's not going to... It'll likely be a single color kind of LCD screen. Uh, very few pixels, so you won't really need a memory card to run that. Uh, let's see.
Ground, let's see, clock, clock. Wow, that takes up a lot of pins, too. We'll need to definitely double check and make sure that. Let's see, LSDA. All right. This could get really complicated if we're not careful. Um, let's see. If I go back to let's see, speakers, is that what yeah. Something like this. So if I just pick this random speaker here and we check out a data sheet. Let's just see what it tells us. So I just want to know like what this is like. Uh, German company. Oh wow, they give almost nothing. <laughs> hmm. So what do we pick here? I like these look really cool, but I think they're probably a bit much for what we're trying to do. Oh, they don't have a data sheet. <laughs> Let's go look that up real quick. All right. Two point eight inch by one point two inch. I mean, that's reasonable size. It's still pretty big, though. Audio. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably a bit much. Those are going to be too big. Some sort of basic speaker would be the best. Uh, I just don't know how to, like, the best method for wiring something like that up. Let me just see something real quick. Active, in stock, just pick from this list. And then I want to see a surface mount part. Termination. <laughs> you can buy washable speakers. Should we make our uh, lightsaber waterproof? That would be a fun one, I'm sure. Can we not pick like a mounting type? Maybe not. Because I'm sure you can buy like surface mount speakers. So I wanted to see, you know, what that looked like. <laughs> this was a dollar nine. But we still have to get this mounted in there somehow. So. Yeah, something like this is the best. I just don't know how to drive it. I don't know exactly what needs to go on with the the teensy to drive a uh, uh, 
a board like that. And so that's why this audio shield thing is interesting. But let's use the input and output simultaneously together with the toolkit of audio. Oh, because this has input and output. Maybe that's part of why it seems so complicated. Real times are also creating and sound reactive projects. Interesting. Yeah. I still am not a big fan, though, especially because of the size. The size is going to make it tricky to use inside of our uh, circuit board. So it'd be better if we could use one of these basic speakers, but we need to. Uh, make sure we know what we're getting into here and that we can actually do it. Let me look up a couple of things. Let's see what they're doing here too because they I think they put their schematic here. They don't say what chip they're using. Oh yeah, they do. SGTL 5000. It's an NXP chip. Low power stereo codec design to provide conference audio solution for portable products that require line in, mic in, line out, and headphone out, and digital I.O. Oh, okay, so it's a way to convert to that. I don't need to do that. I just need to convert to a, um, uh, well, I guess it's kind of like that conversion. Uh, let's see. I just don't know how complicated this gets. <laughs> Adafruit is fast becoming one of my best friends for just random stuff that I need. Let's see. Um, don't need anything quite like that. Oh, I guess the reason their circuit is so complicated, too, is because they have the memory card. If we use the Teensy 4.1, we don't need the memory card because it'll have the slot on there. It'll be the same one that we used in the Falcon uh, when we did the light up the lights on the Falcon, so it'll have a memory card in there for that. Hmm, Okay. So, what do we need? Like an SPI to speaker or something? Or SPI speaker, maybe? Just trying to like figure out a interface that it would have. If anyone comes across anything or has any ideas, I'm all ears. Three nine six eight. Forty millimeter speaker. That's pretty big. <laughs> The two long color code wires to solder or plug into a breadboard. Technical details. <laughs> they have their own way to make a lightsaber. <laughs> Might not be a bad thing to look into for us to get an idea. But they don't say specifically how to connect all this. <clears throat> <clears> 
We just need some sort of like driver chip or something. I would think. I don't I still don't really know what I'm doing here. Uh okay, this is interesting. Audio tone processor. Let's see, audio. DLC without pins. Maybe you can just do this direct from the Teensy. Like, literally just plug the wires in the Teensy and drive it. I'm sure you have to have some circuit to clean up the signal and everything and to make sure that there's no power issues, but... You might be able to. Weird. All right, this is a, when I just Googled like driver chip, this is a thing that came up. If you say out strode ground in, pretty straightforward. Hmm. Okay. What else can we do? This is just me thinking to myself a lot and like it seems like it should be pretty straightforward, but I just don't know what I'm doing, so I don't know the things that I'm missing. Let me see what's available in the TNC stuff in Arduino already. Because there might be example projects too. Alright, we may not even get through this whole list of requirements tonight. With as much trouble as some things can cause or some obstacles are giving us. Alright, let's open a new sketch. And then... Examples, and we want stuff for Teensy. And we need something audio. So this effects. Wave file player USB. <laughs> Tutorial. There's filters, microphone check, mixers. Sorry, my computer had a moment there. Blink while playing, playing music. This is probably the thing we want, the most basic right here, right? All 
I'm sure these links are really useful. <laughs> Oh, this uses the board. So he's just showing how exactly how to do that. Share the advanced Microsoft audio. All the workshop materials available here. We made a full video walkthrough. Preloaded with wave files. So they could play wave files with this. That's cool. So it gives you some idea of what they're doing. And it use it, but it's using their existing that board that we were looking at earlier. I want to know if there's a way we could just put a speaker on a custom board and do it without having to use a chip. Oh, interesting. This has a little spot on it, too, for uh, mounting a volume knob. <laughs> That's funny. Excuse me. Okay. What's the best way we can figure out this problem? Actually, let's see. Connect speaker to Arduino. Let's just see what this says. This is a pride. Too much current from it might still work for now, but it is damage at least 120 ohm resistor in line with the speaker for direct connection. Of course, it will not be as loud, but then you are not uh, messing with that. Best results you need a transistor and capacitor to connect to your speaker, speaker Google for lots of schematics. Okay, so it's really is just an output straight to the speaker, and yeah, you should use some sort of a transistor thing, or maybe we can use a amplifier chip to make it loud. Okay, I think we can make that work then. Use diode protection and drive transistor. That makes the most sense, honestly. All right, just reading through a forum. So it looks like we can connect the speaker directly, but we need to drive it through um, a MOSFET at least or something. And I would like to see if maybe getting about uh, something about getting an amplifier, which is this one chip that I think I looked up with, might pull this off. This is that chip. Uh, it takes a lot of external components, though. Reset in. Left in, right in. Strobe in. Interesting. Amplifier. If anyone has any idea for any chips or anything, uh, let me know. So there is these like amplifiers that you can buy, but it looks like all of them are really small devices. They're going to be really hard to work with.
Nothing through hole, it looks like. Let's just see what we can come up here. <laughs> Page does not exist. Of course it doesn't. All right, well, this is an option, though. I think at a minimum we can make it quiet. We might be able to do something later on to make it louder, too. But I think we can do that. So let's go ahead and just go back to our original, our, all of our speakers here. And I'm just going to pick one. How's it going, Beth? We're designing a custom lightsaber for the next project. I'm just going to go with this basic one. I like this little adhesive thing on it and all that. This is a very basic speaker, so... I think this uh, makes the most sense to start with, uh, just to get an idea, and then if we we can change it later if we need to. All right, let me just this over here and copy the info over. All right, I need a link. And description. All right, so that handles our speaker thing. Wow, that was a really complicated problem. <laughs> Way more than it should have been for the first problem. All right, uh, let's see. So what's next on this list? Said sound effects, color changing programmable aid. We need NeoPixels. We know how to do that. Um, but I think we should probably move down to our power option here and figure that out. Because we need rechargeable batteries. And I think that's going to, what batteries we pick is going to decide how we do our NeoPixel circuit. Because we're going to need the voltage for it. So... Let's see. All right. Let's see what DigiKey says about this one. Oh, hold on. Rechargeable batteries. Battery management, yada yada. Let's see, it's in this battery packs category. Hmm. A lot of these are really expensive. <laughs> nope, go the other way. I want to see the cheap ones. And then let's do in stock and active just to make sure we get that stuff. So, well, I clicked in stock. Why didn't it value added item? What does that mean? This is a value added item which we custom assemble or package. I must say we can assemble or package it specifically if you order and ship it the same day. If you place this item on order, it will show up on back order. We will contact you if you're unable to fulfill it. Interesting. Uh, they're probably just taking batteries and putting them together is what they're doing. Yeah, I think that's all they're doing. But it does raise the voltage, which is nice. Uh... So that's an option. I guess I didn't think about that. We could just put some batteries in series and then we get uh, our, uh, our voltage required. Well, kind of. We're still going to need a regulator, I think. One that can push a lot of current, so... All right, let's go to just rechargeable batteries. In stock and active. 
All right, and then voltage rated. Uh, you can get a lot of different stuff. All right, anything from a dollar six to you know two hundred bucks for this one, but this is like a laptop. <laughs> Let's see what we can get in the six volt range. See, my big thing is I'm worried about size too, because it's got to fit in the lightsaber, like in the handle. And most of these are enormous. <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to connect just a big lead acid battery to the uh, <laughs> to the lightsaber, have a big cord hanging off. That would be kind of funny. Nickel cadmium, one point eight amp hours. Ah. Let's see. Anything in here that would even come remotely close maybe this but even that still looks enormous and it's 71 bucks yeah nothing here all right let's take away some of these let's change some of these filters then uh let's take away the rated voltage so you can get little ones like this i want lithium ion why don't we start with that Let's see what this gives us. Yep, so most of them are gonna be like 3.7 volt batteries. Yeah, for lithium ion they are. Though, if you put two of them together, you get 7.4. So then it really comes down to current. We're gonna need a lot of current. So, like, multiple amp hours. You can buy them like this. There's a... Hmm... I'm wondering if we can get them um, like, oh man, maybe we get a battery holder and just use something like this, put two of them together to get 7.4 volts, then we can put a regulator on to uh, cool that down a little bit. Problem is you only get 650 milliamp hours, which is not a lot, and as much current as we're looking at pulling, I mean that could give you maybe like, maybe 10 minutes of runtime. but they might recharge pretty fast too. But I don't know how you charge them if they're like that. We need a whole management system for that. Oh man. All right, this gets complicated as well. Good, I was hoping it wasn't gonna be easy. <laughs> This part of the reason why I want to do all this ridiculous stuff is because I wanted to learn so much like on how to do this. What is this? 3.6 volts, 3.25 amp hours. That's a lot of power. How big is this? I know it's like 15 bucks, but maybe this is the option. Let me know if y'all think of anything. Charge voltage is 4.2. That's easy enough to manage, I think. Overcurrent range, 3 amps to 6 amps. 
20 millimeters wide and 70 millimeters long. That's pretty good, actually. Extreme cases, explosion, and or fire may result. Well, hopefully we don't blow it up, but that would... <laughs> Let's see. Maybe let me go back to one of these hobbyist websites again. I'll just do Adafruit because I tend to gravitate towards that. But let's see. Rechargeable. I just want to see what it takes to do make a recharging bat or like a rechargeable battery system. Hmm. <laughs> you can get an Arduino basic uh, rechargeable 5 volt power shield. Interesting. So what does this do? That's oh, small. I might be able to fit in there. Battery charger circuit. You'll be able to keep your power hungry project running even while charging a battery. This little DC DC boost converter module can be powered by any 3.7 volt lithium ion battery and convert the battery output to 5.2 volts DC for running your 5 volt projects. That's exactly what we need. Like, wow, that is exactly what we need. <laughs> if you don't need the one amp battery charger, smart load sharing, or one, let's check out the power boost 5000C, 5500C. I know this is expensive, but this might almost be worth it and just to stick in there somehow because it actually makes this very easy to do. Yeah, because it's tiny as well. Look at this. Oh, we can solder like LEDs to it and things to different indicators. That's almost perfect. And then we just need to get a big 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, which is what we've basically picked right here. Well, sort of, yeah. Okay. I could see this working. It needs to have pass-through... Oh, this is going to be tricky, though. It needs to have pass-through data. Is the cost worth the effort it saves? Oh, yeah. one hundred. I think, like, hands down, probably, the cost is worth the effort it saves, even though it's 20 bucks. And But we could probably buy it on some other site. It's more an issue, so the issue now I'm thinking of is uh, how do we connect this to the uh, the Teensy? Because we need to be able to send data to the Teensy. So we can reprogram it on the fly.
Oh, does it have a big USB on the other side? <laughs> okay, you can mount it. It's got the spot to put a big USB port on the other side. <clears throat> does it allow communi- Okay, so the last question is, does it allow communication to go through? Two amp internal switch means you can get 1,000 amps from 3.7. Just make sure 1,000 milliamps. Ooh, I'm not sure that's enough though. <clears throat> With the amount of power that we we're gonna need, that may not be enough. It will automatically switch over to USB power when available instead of continuously charging draining the battery. This is more efficient. It lets you charge boost at the same time without any eruption of the output. The UPS. Please note this board is designed to be used only with the with a lithium poly attached. It won't work without a battery. Oh, okay. So you gotta have a battery on it of some sort. You can't just pass through power. Has a th it has thick power wires. Especially true if you're actually drawing 1,000 milliamps out of the power boost, 1,000 C, the MCP 73871 maxes out at 1.8 amps. You do have to always have this to manage the low spikes. Start with the USB. Use a terminal block. Pick up the okay, so it does come with the USB jack. Oh, but you can also power directly from the wires. Got it. Okay. It doesn't say anything about being able to pass data through, though. That would be a big issue for me. Um, so what are alternatives to that? We could have another port on the device where you can actually like plug into it and, uh, and upload data. I don't like that option, but it's an option. Uh, what is happening to my stream? I think my frame rate's dropping right now. I am really sorry about that. I don't know why it's happening. Hopefully you all can still hear me and everything. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. I just realized I never updated the current goal. I might fix that real quick. So we still have some time here. I really like this option a lot. Like it's really close to being almost perfect or to being perfect. Brainstorm ideas. For the lightsaber and find parts. Okay, that's what we're doing.
Full break after battery, low battery indicator LED lights up red when the voltage dips below 3.2 volts. Optimize for onboard 1000 milliamp charge rate iOS data. Full break out for battery in. At that rate, it'll take like three hours to charge that battery that I've picked. <laughs> Twenty milliamps when disabled. Okay. They also mentioned this uh, other one. I think this is just basically a, a smaller version of the same thing. Yep. So we're definitely going to need the 1000 if we decide to go with it. What was the price? I just closed that tab, but what was the price of the other one? Was it the same? No, it was five bucks cheaper. Okay. <laughs> I bet you this board gets really hot too if you're cranking and pulling a, a thousand milliamps. Which, with all the LED, the NeoPixels and stuff, we could easily burn through that. Uh, all right, so we don't see anything about data being passed through, which is kind of annoying. Ion cylindrical battery, 2200 milliamp hours. Ooh, I like that one a lot. The 3.7 volt, it already has the connector and everything. I'll see if I can find that somewhere so we can buy it as well. They suggest keeping the constant current draw at about one amp. It looks like most things are going to have this problem. I don't know that we're going to be able to push a lot more than that. I was hoping for like three or four if we could find the right battery, but I just don't think there's... Uh, without multiple in parallel... And we need to step up the voltage to 5 volts, so I think that would be an issue as well. What is our... Oh, shoot. Max current draw. So if we do... Sorry, I didn't want to do this. So we do 60 milliamps per NeoPixel. That's 1.8. That's a lot. I don't know that in practice that we would ever be pulling that much, but that's like if you're going full white brightness, uh, 30 NeoPixels would pull that much. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a way we can do this modular then. So if we're doing NeoPixels, maybe we just plug like, I don't know, some sort of, or just, just plug us, get an off the shelf kind of strip that we can plug more into later if we decide we're not using that much power and we can use more. I was hoping to make them really bright, but that may not be an option here. Yeah, that may not be an option. All right, so if we decide to go with this option, let me just open up the tab again so that we can have both of these. 
if we decide to go with this option, then we're going to need to have two USB ports, one for charging on the device and then the other for um, data. Which is really awkward, but I don't see a better option. It's annoying that this thing can't... I haven't been able to definitely confirm it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't pass data through. Although it seems like it wouldn't be that hard. Is there a circuit for it? Like, if you just connect the right wires... All right. Here are the PCB files. Oh, here's a schematic. I want to see this. All right, this is really hard to read even for me. I know you all probably can't see it, but just bear with me for a second. D minus D plus. Micro USB. Yeah, the data is not even connected. The data lines aren't. And then the ones on the other side are just held in the default states. Which is the 2.5 volts floating between ground and uh, okay. That's really annoying. Can we get around that? I was thinking like from like if we pick a USB cable and we like splice the wires, right? That might be an option, uh, now that I'm thinking about it. So imagine this, right? Take this board, but when you connect on this side, we connect by wires through a USB to the Teensy. And then rather than connect the data lines, we somehow go back here and... Is that an... Can we connect the data line? No, there's no connection points there. Dang it! I was hoping to be able to like... Well, and we could splice wires coming in on this side too and then connect them that way. So we could connect the data, like uh, two wires going around this board, connect the data lines. And then when you plug it in, it charges the power, but also the data lines can speak to it. Something about that seems like a bad idea, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Hmm. I'm not sure what to make of that thought. It presents an interesting problem, though. Let me go back to my wish list here. So we're, we're working our way through this slowly. But I need to add questions here that we solve or change things. Battery pack... Word. Herder on USB cable. You know what we need to do is remove all the ridiculous spacing here. There we go. <laughs> I'm 
I'm starting to realize how big of a project this is, and uh, it's exciting, but it's also really daunting because there's a lot that's got to be done to get this right. We are definitely doing a custom board, like 100%. Uh, but what all goes on that and how everything attaches to that is going to be a little tricky. Although... Now that I'm thinking about it, if we mount this to the board, we can probably put pins down that connect these things in all the right ways. Well, maybe that's not really necessary. But yeah, we could put connection points. Okay. I think this is a good option, and I think maybe we go that way. I don't know, I don't have any ideas about, like, if it's a bad idea to connect, uh, like, data lines. All right. Let's go with this device. Let me see if I can find it on, like, DigiKey or something. What is the out of fruit part number? 2465. And we're going we're going to search both of these. 1781 and 2465. Actually, let's look up on Mouser. Mouser has been more friendly. At least lately. Especially like Just getting stuff shipped on time. DigiKey is taking forever to ship anything. Uh, what do we say? Out of fruit seventeen eight one. Here it is, and they're in stock. Hey, look at that. All right, I'll move this over here. This is going to have to be under the assembly bomb, this component, because it'll be part of the entire assembly. Let me copy this first. There is, I'm betting like a better than 50% chance that I make something that just bursts into flames at some point. Just totally on accident. And text and then description. If anybody has any suggestions for me not like accidentally causing it to burst into flames, that would be great too. I gotta fit all of this into a custom made lightsaber handle too. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be really good. All right. So that was the battery, and then we need the power boost 2465. Four, six, five. Hopefully these are in stock. 125. Sweet. So we'll need this as well. Okay. It looks like we're going to have to go with this and just be really careful with the NeoPixels. Because I think we're going to have a hard time finding a board that's like can push much more power than this.
If we do some sort of standard connector on the end for the NeoPixels, though, we will get um, uh, it would make it easy to change out the size of them or something, or add more strips if necessary. Okay. So that's that part. So I think we're good on this for now. I'm just gonna start like marking these things that we've looked into and think we're okay on. This doesn't satisfy our super bright requirement, unfortunately. We might have to, we'll have to come back to that. Let's see, good. All right, motion sensing. <laughs> we need an accelerometer or some kind. All right, let's jump back into things and see if we can find one. Hold on. I need to look this up on... Let me double check something real quick. Hopefully stream quality's come back. It has, okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, all right. The reason too I want to get more into making like custom circuit boards and everything is once I now that I found out that the cost of the circuit boards are going to be significantly cheaper than expected, I can afford actually to make some mistakes. And honestly, it's hard to just it's there's nothing really better than just trying something, you know. Uh, forty five dollars, forty five dollars, jeez. I need something with a decent enough package for me to. Uh, solder easily like soldering something like this by hand is incredibly difficult <laughs> all the cheap ones are these super difficult to use packages uh let's see if anybody has like a soi let's start with in stock active and then package we don't want BGA Let's see what this SMD stuff looks like oh, that's not bad Kind of like that, actually. They're expensive, though. Jeez. Um, 
Wow, they get really expensive really fast, too. Didn't realize that. Or I would have tried to do something easier. This is probably most like what we want. Basic SPI accelerometer. Wow, 120 Gs, huh? Is there anything smaller or cheaper? Because that is pretty expensive. I can think I think I could solder this by hand if I really needed to. It would be fun, but I could do it. But something like this, the pins are too small. What is the package type on this? VFLGA. Right? Am I looking at the right one? This one. Eight SOIC. Okay, yeah, that's about what I want. Kind of an expensive chip, but I think this makes the most sense. I just want to see what the circuit looks like. So it'll have a series of commands, basically, that you can do to um, get the data or, or get the current, you know, change or whatever. Uh, what I want to see is the application circuit. So typically these data sheets for chips like this will have some sort of, like, typical application or something. Like the way they intend for it to be wired up. Here it is. So they want a capacitor on VDD and a capacitor between VREG and ground, but other than that, it's just the usual stuff. Chip select, SEL, SDO, SDI, MP to ground. And then they tell you the values of what those capacitors need to be here. Okay. I think this would be a... I want to try this. I really want to try this. Um, change. Is it only X and Y? Is this only two dimensions? Can it not detect three-dimensional movement? I guess so. Interesting. Oh, that's kind of weird. Okay. There's no Z component. Let me go back here and see if there's any other that have this SOIC type package. Because anything else is going to be like really hard to use. What's this 12 SMD look like? Oh. Are those expensive? They are. Axis, X, X, Y, Z. Uh, let me see. Let me go back here. Clear that. Let me just see if there's any reasonable options for having X, Y, and Z axis. These really hard to solder ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, unless we go for this ridiculous kind of packaging, it's just not going to happen. And there's no way I can hand solder it because the leads are all underneath. All right, I think we got to figure out how to work within the X, Y thing. All 
All right. I thought I cleared everything, but maybe not. Okay. Oh, it's just being buggy. <laughs> All right. This says it only works in the x-axis, but we'll have to try and figure out. Oh, it's an automotive part. That's interesting. Could always get multiple. I think that's a terrible idea, but... Single or dual access. Oh, I bet the... Oh, I bet the dual access one is like... Uh, a different part. One two zero S X D R. Yeah, we want the two one two zero. I think that's the. I think that's the part. Doesn't look, it's not popping up. The dual access one isn't popping up anywhere. Obvious. Is it? Did it just not appear in a search? Oh, it's out of stock. That's why. Hmm. Let me go back to Adafruit. Maybe they have a chip that they use. Uh, all the ones they use are tiny little chips. Although, alternatively, we could get a little board like this. Although it's out of stock. <laughs> we're going to end up with so many... Oh, man, this is a terrible way to do this, but we're going to end up with so many tiny boards inside the hilt to try and get it all to work. Low power, triple access, low cost, but has just about every extra you'd want in XLR with 3 axis sensing, 10-bit precision. I2C. I2C is the same interface that the... Uh, well, the audio is not running on that because we're probably running that by a, like a PWM or something. How big is this? Pretty small. We could easily mount it on something. What are these connectors at the end? Oh, I2C and SPI interface options. Okay, yeah, I like that. Tap, double tap, orientation, and free fall detection. Oh, that's kind of cool. And you could do additional ADC inputs if you want that for some reason.
I like this thing. I like this thing a lot. Eight oh nine. Yep, they have some in stock. They're pretty cheap. Even comes with the headers. All right, this might be a thing. <laughs> I will add it to the list. I really, I, I, mean, I kind of don't like doing this because I was hoping to, um, Well, I'm hoping to like do my own circuit and sensor and everything, but we can't find a chip that's easy to solder by hand, so we just kind of have to. All right, I'm going to use this one. I think we do need to be wary of it's a good thing too that's low powered because we're going to have to be wary of current draw this thing's going to be so expensive I don't know if we're going to be able to build it I just don't have the money to keep building these things Description. Maybe we can find something better for that. Eventually. Okay. Assume that that's that part done. All right, this is one of the things I was looking forward to, LCD screens. <laughs> We need a tiny LCD driver, or display, sorry. Doesn't have to be full color. <clears throat> Probably anything like two inches or less would be ideal. Mm, 1.9 might be too small. That leaves us with 15 left. Hopefully they're in stock. Ah, oh, I don't like ribbon cables. I was hoping for like a mono color that I could, uh, Just uh, do basic stuff on. Wow, uh, eighty-six dollars for this one. <laughs> oh, it's a touch too. It's like a that's like a smartwatch size one. Wow, some of these are super expensive.
1.3 inch display. This one's pretty tiny. Uh, not quite what I wanted, though. Maybe LCD is not the right word. Maybe LED displays are better. Oh, this is just going to give us like seven segments and stuff like that. <laughs> These are the kind of things I want, these dot matrices. Nine results. $111 for this. Yeah, this is not what I want. Okay. <laughs> They're expensive. Alright, so LCD is where it is at. Well, hold on. OLED displays. Let me just make sure there's nothing here. These are probably like full-size things, but... Oh, wait. All right, not an ideal price, but this is a good start, actually. I need something small. Preferably not with a ribbon cable. <laughs> I like this a lot, actually. I like this a lot. It just has that ribbon cable, which is tough to work with. Wow, this is actually pretty small. Way smaller than you would expect. Wow, holy crap, it is tiny. We do need to find a bigger one. <laughs> I've worked with these kind of big displays before, but they're a little too much. They're just character displays, and they're tricky. They're tough to fit inside something this small. What is this? Depending on how big this is, this could work. 
It's written in German. <laughs> I think. Let's see. All right, give me an idea of the size of this thing. Thirty six millimeters wide, a little over an inch. Ooh, that's pretty big. That's really hard to work with. Or wait. Oh, I may not be looking at the right one. Hold on. Which one? Yay, W one sixty two and LED. Okay. W one sixty two. W one sixty two. This one. Wow, it doesn't look like that at all in the, the picture that they're showing. EA one sixty two dash N L E D. Which is this one. And they're showing this is much bigger than forty four millimeters. Okay, so yeah, that'd be too big to fit. This is the one they're showing in the picture. Twenty six point eight. All right, that's better. Hmm, it could work, but still tricky. I don't, I don't feel good about this option. I'd actually almost rather go with the ribbon cable just to get something small that'll fit easily. Yeah, something like this little one. As hard as it's going to be to work with, maybe the better option. Interesting. Ugh. uses I2C. Size-wise, it's pretty small. We'll have to write a whole library to control this too, which would be exciting. <laughs> All right. Well, we're getting around eight o'clock, and I'm getting hungry, so I'm probably gonna stop here and uh, uh, look at this some more next time. Still, a lot of things to try and work out. I mean, we're getting, I'm starting to get somewhat of an idea of the system in my head. It's now coming down to like, okay, how do we fit all of this into a, uh, you know, into the handle of a lightsaber? We got to custom make that too. So there's going to be a lot of trickiness to it. What things did we kind of knock out? We still need to do LCD screen. Buttons are still going to be kind of tricky. Um, 
USB-C ports, not too hard. Recharger, we've already done that. Light features on hilt, that's really hard. We still haven't figured out what we're going to do there. And then a vibration circuit as well. Man, I wish I had the ability to, like, surface mount a ton of components easily. Because that would probably make this a lot easier. I could just uh, do a single board with a lot of the hardware for these different things on it. Which would be ideal. Because we have kind of a very specific use case for a lot of, a lot of different things on here. Alright, well... Thank you for joining me tonight. I know we were just a lot of researching things and stuff. That's how all these projects start, was we got to just start researching to figure stuff out. But I still really want to do this, even though it looks like it's going to be extremely difficult. I still want to do this project really bad. So we will keep working on it. I will be back on Thursday to do some more of this. Hopefully we'll get our parts by then. Our circuit boards should be shipping soon, and... Other electronic components I think ship today and should be arriving soon, so I will keep you all updated on that. But thank you all for joining me tonight. If you have any ideas on this, please send them to me, because this is going to be very complicated, so any and all ideas that you can give me would be greatly appreciated. Alright, I will see you all later. Bye.